Hey guys, this is Eric RPG, and I'm back. And when we last left off, we discovered that one of the Bensons might Benson Cunningham or Harry Benson might be a snatcher. So we're screwed if that's true. And we're back at Queen's Hospital after jumping out of our tricycle, which was sabotaged, so that we could not operate it, and we had to jump out at the last minute. And now we're at Queen's with random Hajil. So let's go in. Well, we saw something very suspicious in dorm number three, so let's just go there. Should've just done it automatically. A trophy, maybe? Yeah, it kind of does, too. Now you look at it real closely with the silhouette. Dong. This apparently leads down to a lower level. It looks like Cheney was right. Queen's Hospital does have a basement. And that basement is the Snatcher's main lair. Out of the frying pan and into the fire, as they say. Well, what do we do now, Gillian? We're gonna peep. The guy with the light. Hey, that's not fair. Well, well, what do we have here? It's the hospital corridor. It's the same hallway, but not the one that's on the first floor. So what does that mean? An entire floor of Queen's Hospital has been duplicated underground. So the same floor is both upstairs and downstairs, sort of like parallel worlds. So that desolate setup upstairs is all just a smokescreen. They're making it look like the place is closed down, but in reality, they're keeping themselves quite busy. Gillian, that means we're already right in the middle of their headquarters. Please use extreme caution. All right. Now let's just check the disc out. Investigate switches. Only two. Probably have to be turned on in the combination.
Alright, now that we're in here, I'm gonna look over. No, it's a skeleton. We have to actually look at all of this stuff before something happens. I would then need MRIs. We have to look over again. Oh no, it's gone! Oh dear. Got me. Metal's a Batch's character. Going to door two this time. <clears throat> Looking at the shelf. Monitors and containers. Yeah, it looks like they're building body parts for the snatchers here. Like eyes. for getting rid of cancer cells. Huh. And antibodies for cancer cells.
<coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, like I said, they are missing with DNA. Huh. And they're decked out. Dated technology. Twenty to thirty years. Hmm. Decomposing protein. Exit. One and two at the same time. All right, let's try pushing both buttons simultaneously. The two buttons are on opposite panels, so there's no way one person can push them both alone. But if two of us work together, it might do it. That's it, Gillian. It makes perfect sense. It's the same system they used to use in nuclear missile silos in the late 20th century. Eliminates the risk of one man going nuts and acting alone. Well, it's hard to be sure, but let's give it a try anyway. I've got button one. Random, you push number two. You ready? On three. One, two, three. Come on! It's opened. You did it! Door number three opened. With safety measures like that, they must have had a good reason for wanting to keep it closed. Let's go inside. <clears throat> making sure they would rest in peace. No, it doesn't. These have got to be their victims. This is probably where they hide the bodies of the originals they snatch from places like Outer Heaven. They probably picked Outer Heaven because it gets a lot of VIP traffic. Plus, during masquerade time, they can work the place and still keep their identity secret. Yeah, and the guy who set up the link between them and Outer Heaven was Freddy, that taxi driver. They must have gone after him, not because of who he was, but what he did. After all, with a taxi, there's plenty of chances to milk your customers for information. That's probably how they learned about Outer Heaven and Plato's Cavern. I've been wondering what they had done with the bodies. Want to hide a book? What better place than the library? Need to hide a body? How about the morgue? And for them, keeping the bodies hidden is crucial. I mean, if somebody who's supposed to be dead is out walking the streets, it wouldn't be too hard to figure out that something screwy is going on. That means that if we can figure out who these bodies were, then we just nailed four snatchers. All right.
gross still. Ew. Estimated time of death. Hmm. Less than 30 days. So about a month. And four months on almost all the other ones. So that one's kind of fresh. Almost all the meat's still hanging off of it. Cause of death. Identity. Hair, clothing, and even teeth. Anything that could be used to make an identification is gone. Simulated reconstruction. Reconstruct corpse. Now performing simulated reconstruction of the head and facial features of each of the four victims. Commencing with victim number one. Now performing craniometric analysis, X-ray and sagittal X-ray, magnetic resonance imaging, and positron CT data gathered. Complete cranial data now being compiled. Craniometric analysis complete. Now commencing reconstruction. First, victim's age. Estimate based on one, presence or absence of cranial fontanelles and chroma of epicranial sutures. Two, area of facial region and cranium. Three, height of upper and lower jaw and development of alveolar part. And four, location of cranial center of gravity. Next, victim sex. Estimate based on one, overall size of cranium. Two, parietal bone angle. And three, development of splachnal cranium. Lastly, victim's race. Estimate based on one, Overall cranial configuration, 2. Volume of intracranial cavity, and 3. Mass of the skull. Now commencing soft feature reconstruction based on average results of above analysis. Reconstructing. Initial phase completed. Margin of error on estimate of victim's race, 10% based on use of average values. Now adding postulated hair and eye features. Reconstruction of head of first victim completed. It's Freddie Nielsen. Moving on to second victim. Now commencing reconstruction of features of victim number two. Now starting craniometric analysis. Complete cranial data now being compiled using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Craniometric analysis complete. Now commencing reconstruction using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Reconstructing. Initial phase completed. Margin of error on estimate of victim's race 10% based on use of average values. Now adding postulated air and eye features. Reconstruction of head of second victim completed. That's Lisa Nielsen. Moving on to third victim. Now commencing reconstruction of features of victim number three. Now starting craniometric analysis. Complete cranial data now being compiled using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Craniometric analysis complete. Now commencing reconstruction using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Reconstructing. Initial phase completed. Margin of error on estimate of victim's race 10% based on use of average values. Now adding postulated hair and eye features. Reconstruction of head of third victim completed. Who in the world is that? That's the director of Queen's Hospital. Uh, Shin Fui, uh, what's his face? Uh... Chin Chu O Gillian. Moving on to last victim. Now commencing reconstruction of features of victim number four. 
This one's the most recent. It's still decomposing. Now starting craniometric analysis. Complete cranial data now being compiled using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Craniometric analysis complete. Now commencing reconstruction using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Reconstructing. Initial phase completed. Margin of error on estimate of victim's race 10% based on use of average values. Now adding postulated hair and eye features. Reconstruction of head of final victim completed. It's... It's the chief! What? The chief is a snatcher! The Benson on the scrap of that patient record was Benson Cunningham! Judging from the condition of the body, I would estimate that the snatching took place approximately one month ago. So it was the chief who sabotaged our turbo cycle. In those matches we found in Harry's room, the chief must have put them there to try to set him up. No doubt Harry figured it out and decided to leave that face-to-face -face message. Wait a minute. Didn't Mika say that Harry had left to go find the chief? That's right. He was probably trying to track down some evidence on the chief. Gillian, I'd say that this Harry has put himself in a pretty dangerous spot. If it was the chief that sabotaged the turbo cycle, doesn't that mean that he already knows we're on to him? Damn! Harry and Mika are in danger! That's far enough, Junker. Your little investigation is over. It's them! Who? Snatchers? Get them! Out. My arm! I can't reach my blaster! Ah, I'm hitting the leg! Is that the best you can do, Junker? Who's, who's there? Chip! Jin Shu off, you scum! It seems you still have some fight left in you. You two are finished, but our plans move forward. We are now entering phase two. And when we do, not only this city, but the entire world will be ours to command. Phase two? What are you talking about? As you know, our operations have been hindered up to now by the flaws in our artificial skin. The skin shortcomings have kept us away from ultraviolet rays, forcing us to do our work at night, underground, or in the winter. In the end, we had to construct a hospital like this, all because of the flaws in our artificial skin. This was the only difference between us and you humans. But now we have broken this barrier. Huh? We are on the verge of developing a perfect artificial skin. Thanks to the cooperation of a new partner in our plan. Perfect artificial skin? Uh, a new partner? Once we have the new skin, nothing will be able to stop us. And with that, our plan moves to phase two. Our little experiment in this city will end, and we'll move in force to take over the world. Don't be so sure. You won't get out of the city that easy. <laughs> you humans are always so overconfident, so naive. What are you talking about? I'm sure you're aware that the Kyoto Summit, being held to decide how to handle this natural problem, opens tomorrow. Metal, is that right? Yes. Countries around the world are concerned about the snatcher problem. It will be one of the main topics discussed at this year's summit. That's right. Tomorrow, we attack the summit. <laughs> you must be crazy. The security there will be incredible. You won't even get close. Must I explain everything to you, Junker? Aren't you even aware that a fellow Junker will be giving a special presentation at the summit? The chief! Cutting him! So that's why you snatched him. We've known that your chief would be speaking at the summit for over three months now. Gillian, the summit is tomorrow. We have to hurry. 
Listen, we have your chief. You junkers are at our mercy, and so is this city. And tomorrow, we move on the world. <laughs> Nothing can stop us now. We will finally achieve our long-awaited goal of global domination. <laughs> Who is this we you keep talking about? We? We are an evolved life form. Given life in the depths of the Kremlin by our creator, Modnar. We are a new race. Modnar? Modnar? The Kremlin? Those names are familiar, but... Our goal is to snatch all of the world's leaders and then achieve total control of human thought and worldwide racial unification. You're insane. Humanity won't be so easily dominated. You underestimate the strength of the human spirit. I think not. In the same way as the Nazis, our strategy begins with the overpowering of the spirit of the people. We will strike at you humans' weakest point, the most primitive part of your psychological makeup, your suspiciousness and fear. By provoking suspicion and mistrust throughout the populace, we will destroy that fragile fabric which holds your society together, that of trust. Fear is you humans' weak point. It is the primitive part of your brains that binds you forever to your animal ancestors and makes you vulnerable. By stimulating that part of your atavistic instincts, our plan can succeed magnificently. Gillian, at this rate they'll kill us all. You've got to get out alive. You're a junker. Just what did you have in mind? I got a big fireworks show ready for him. Better that than get snatched. What? You're gonna blow yourself up? No, we're better off fighting together. Hey, it won't work. I'm hitting the thigh. Ow, oh, damn. A bounty hunter can't do anything with a leg wound like this. I might as well have been shot in the head. There must be some way out of here. Hey, I wasn't doing this job just for fun. I stayed ready for situations like this. I've always been prepared to go out with a bang. It's December. A little late for fireworks. So it'll be an off-season show. No, I can't let you. My belt's packed with TNT BX. You know, that really strong stuff they use in the mines on Mars? One push, and this whole hospital will go. No trouble at all. No time to sit around thinking, Junker Boy. Go! What are you doing? Get your butt moving, you fool! Get out through this air shaft. I've got a powerful strobe on me. Its flash will screw up their sensors long enough for you to get out. Now you with me? Fireworks are better from a distance anyway, Gillian. Are you two finished chatting? Then I think it's time for you to die. We're quite busy, you know. Get ready. When I give the signal, break into the air shaft and run, and don't forget your blaster. Now, stay with me. Yes, sir. Random. Gillian. Doesn't look like I'm going to have a chance to call in that dead new homie. Don't worry. I'll pay it back to the Snatchers with interest. All right, go. Run, Gillian. Well, damn. Well, this is unexpected. The game froze on me. Well, I'll figure something out. I might have to replay this game up until this point and uh, on the PC from now on. And if I have to do that, that's fine. But um, I'm going to look into this. Well, see you guys later. Bye-bye.